Hey beautiful people, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, my name is Lauren and girl, welcome to the family. So today I want to talk about hormones, in particular estrogen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my personal journey with hormones and estrogen. Let's go way, way, way back to when I first started medically transitioning. The process to get hormones was long-winded. The process is probably different now and I know they're making it harder, so it's probably completely different. Let me think exactly how this happened. So I went to my GP and I expressed that I wanted to medically transition and that I wanted to basically start taking hormones and move forward with this. And, I, and I, I said to my GP as well, I said, I've seen I can buy hormones online. I don't want to do this. I want to do it properly. And my biggest advice to you guys is don't buy hormones online. Don't start fucking around with your body like this because you could take the wrong dose. You don't know what's in these pills and you could get really, really, really sick and it could really mess your body up big time. So I went to my doctor. The first doctor that I seen in my GP surgery was not helpful. She was kind of, I honestly don't think she wanted to help me. So I went and saw a different doctor in my GP. I just asked for a different person when I went, spoke to them again, and they were like, okay, let's get the ball rolling. So they did. And I was so grateful for them to get to, for them to get the ball rolling because where I live is, I live in the countryside and it can be more close-minded here. So I was really happy when I actually found someone who was near my house who was willing to help me. And I had to go and get a psychiatrist test or essentially I had to go and meet with two psychiatrists to get two different opinions to be put forward, to be processed towards uh, the Gender Identity Clinic, which is in London. So I went and did this, and I had my two referrals done fairly quickly. I think we had to pay for them as well. I can't remember now, it was such a long time ago. By the way, I was probably, I'm 28 now, so I think I was... I think I was around 18, 19 years old at this point. So kind of late in the game, really, to start hormones. I'd already gone through puberty, but some of these things, sometimes it can't be helped. And if you can get it before, then that's great. I get my referral and then I take it to my doctor and she's like, great, we have your referral and everything. And then she says, okay, I'm going to send this off. And girl, when I tell you the wait was so long, I think it was probably like close to a year to a year and a half that I waited and I was thinking, me being me, I was thinking, yes, I'm gonna get these, uh, I'm gonna get this cons consultation and then I'm gonna go to them. They're gonna meet me, they're gonna be like, yes, you're fabulous, you're a woman, honey. Yes, you're fabulous, you're a woman, honey. And they give me my hormones. No, not as easy as that. So I go and I have an assessment with them and you also have to prove that you're living in your, uh, I guess you could say, I don't, I don't know what the right word is. It's not your, well, you have to be shown that you're living in your desired gender. So whether you are going to be trans male or trans female, you have to show that you are living in that gender for at least two years. So I kind of, I was nearly at two years and I went and I had the, the uh, consultation done and he was like, mm, mm. he's like, yeah, I think um, I, I need you to come back in another uh another year, I think it was another year. It was a year to six months anyway, so I'm waiting, I'm waiting. I actually get a letter sooner than that, and I go back, and I'm thinking, yes, 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 this is it, this is it, I'm gonna just have to, and they ask you all these kind of questions, and they're assessing you and things like this, and I'm thinking, yes, 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 yes. So I go, no. 
they won't give me hormones again. So then I have to wait another six, seven months to a year. So I'm waiting and I'm waiting and I'm waiting. And I go back and finally I get the approval for hormones. And I'm like, yes, mama, hormones. Yeah. Pump me up, bitch. I'm about to get titties. I'm about to get this. I'm about to get that. Hormones have slow effects. So it takes over time for these effects to come into it. So I finally get my prescription and I can start taking it. So I was taking the pills, uh, which are, they're called, I think they're called, yeah, they're basically estradiol pills. And what colour were they? I think they were blue. So they were, I think they were blue pills. Girl, I'm so sorry. I wish I filmed these videos earlier um, because I can't remember everything. I think they were blue pills. They were, yes, yes, they were definitely blue. And you start on a lower dose and then you increase your dose and you gradually increase it over time till you get to a stable level. And you take this pill every single day. In conjunction with this, as I hadn't had lower surgery yet. I was having testosterone still pumping, pumping through my body very, very high rate. So I would go and have uh, testosterone blockers, which is an injection, and they stick it in your bum. Well, in my bum anyway. They stick it, they stick it in, they alternate between cheeks. And I would go and have that done, mm, I think it was three times a year I would go and have that about three times a year. And I would just go to my GP surgery to have this, which was great. Uh, meanwhile, obviously all my, all my appointments and everything, I had to go all the way out to London. So this video specifically, I'm just gonna talk about hormones. I'm not gonna talk about any other kind of surgeries or anything, this is purely about hormones. But I was taking these tablets for a while, it was great, I could see the effects. It definitely changed my body shape. Uh, it made me more curvy, it made me, uh, my fat distribution changed on my body a lot as well. So I went from, I guess you could say skinny to more curvy, which I personally liked. I didn't really see a massive amount of breast growth. So I think it was about, I think I was taking hormones religiously for about two years, two and a half years. And I didn't really see much development at all, probably not even a cup size really, just very, very, very small A. Hello? Anyways, um, yeah, hardly anything, not even an actual cup size, so probably like half an A cup. So then I decided I went ahead with breast augmentation, which will be another video that I'm gonna, that I will be making over the next couple of days. So I went and had breast, or, or uh, Brenna had breast augmentation, and I had to stop taking hormones for that as well. Uh, so you stop taking hormones just before surgery because it can help with, because uh, it can give you DVT, which is deep vein thrombosis. So I stopped taking hormones for a, li a little bit, had my boobs done, started taking them again, everything was fine. Um, some days I found with the tablets that when you first, I will say this as well, when you first start taking estrogen tablets, you can get a lot of sickness and your body takes a while to adjust. You'll get headaches, you can feel sick for the first week or so, maybe two weeks, it kind of depends on you and your body. Um, of course, everyone's experience is different, uh, but sometimes I would be struggling with depression or I was struggling with depression or um, anxiety, and you do sometimes forget to take your hormones. So sometimes my levels would be up and down, up and down, up and down. So you want to get it to a stable level. Once you reach that stable level and it's stabilised, you continue to take the same dose. And they check you with blood tests. So they take blood from you and check all your levels on a regular basis. Um, a normal level, I do have, um, a normal level basically is, do you know what, I'm not actually going to tell you the normal levels because I don't want you to use this video as 100% educational. This is more just my experience. I don't want to give you guys the wrong levels because everybody's body is slightly different and everyone can tolerate different levels really. 
So there is like a, there's a general standard, but everybody's a little bit different. Taking my tablets and everything, and it wasn't really until after, so I had my boobs done, and then it wasn't really until after that, I've already been taking hormones for nearly two and a half, three years, that I actually started to go and see an actual endocrinologist. And my endocrinologist, because that uh, was actually really helpful in changing how I perceived and how I looked at my hormones. Because before I was just managing it with my GP and we were just doing blood tests and they were kind of just saying, yeah, this is good, yeah, this is bad. I wasn't really getting a specialist's opinion. And then uh, I went on in a, probably, yeah, not long after my boobs. So within six months of getting my boobs done, I had my facial surgery done. And then I had, I think it was like a year to a year and a half break of no surgery at all. And then I had my gender reassignment surgery. Where I found issues with my hormones was after my facial feminization surgery. I don't know if my body just went, no, nope, no more, stop, stop. I'm not having it. But whenever I would take the hormone tablets, I would puke everywhere, very ill, very bad. And I don't know if it's because I had my boobs done and I had my facial work done. And if you don't know, facial feminization surgery is big, surgery like it is major major operation and honestly i was not prepared for how major this operation was like this was major operation and i really want to stress stress that to people it was major so after i had these two surgeries my body could not tolerate tablets it just could not tolerate tablets i don't know what it was it just couldn't take it so I was thinking, oh my God, what am I gonna do? I can't take these tablets, can't take these tablets. And like, like I said earlier, I started seeing an actual endocrinologist and she was like, oh, don't worry if you can't take tablets. You know, this happens to quite a few people when they have surgeries and things. Um, it's only recently I've managed to be able to start taking paracetamol, which is crazy to me. Only recently I've been able to tolerate it in the last like, year or so. And she said, oh, don't worry. What we'll do is we'll put you on these patches so they put, put me on these hormone patches. Girl. The patches were the biggest pain in the ass I've ever had. It's the most annoying thing. Annoying thing. My gosh. For me, I just could not get on with the patches. So it almost looks like a nicotine patch and you stick it anywhere in your body. It doesn't really matter. I stuck it on my hips because I found it easier there. Um, maybe there was some science to, I don't remember if she told me that it, it absorbs better there. I can't really remember. But I would put them there and you change it every two or three days. I think it was two or three days. Correct me if I'm wrong. People that are on these patches, correct me if I'm wrong. Every two or three days. And when you would take it off, it would leave all this sticky residue and all this like, your clothes would stick to it. Sticky mess. It looked awful. And... It was so hard because you're changing these patches so frequently. It's so hard to get off all of the stickiness, which sounds gross. You think just have a shower, but it won't come off in the, in the shower. It's so hard. So then I was on them for a couple months and then I was like, I can't, I can't do it with these patches. It's not working for me. So then she was like, okay, then we have Sandrina gel. Now Sandrina gel is little, little sachets like this size of gel and you rub it into your skin, like on your thighs or on your legs or on your arms or something, and your body absorbs it that way. For me, the gel as well, I mean, honestly, it wasn't convenient. It just wasn't convenient because I was so busy all, all, the, all the time with working full time and doing this and doing that, that it was so hard to A, remember to do this gel every single day. And I don't really, for me, the I don't really feel that the gel actually produced or gave me enough hormones for this. For, well, it did give me enough hormones for what I needed, basically. Um, something else to note as well. After you have SRS, so sexual reassignment surgery or bottom surgery, uh, <clears throat> you don't need to have the T blockers injections. Because once you are technically, quote unquote, castrated your body doesn't produce any um, over excessive amount of testosterone. So therefore you don't need to have the T blocker because then your estrogen 
uh, becomes your more it comes becomes your predominant hormone. Obviously, you're still taking things for it, but it becomes your, your predominant hormone. So now, cut to what I actually have on, or what I actually have in me uh, right now, which is the hormone implant. So the implant, I've never actually seen the implant because he never actually shows me. He always tells me to look away. Um, and I find it interesting, but I'm guessing, I think it's only about this big, quite small. And what they do is, oh, well, they make a little incision on your hips, on your hip bone. So it's right, they do it right here, basically, like down here, right here. And what they do is they do a little incision and they push the implant in and then they stitch you up. And then the implant will naturally dissolve over time. And then this way you get all your hormones without having to worry about taking tablets, putting them in, doing this, doing that. And I think this was actually quite a hard to get type of treatment if all the other types failed you. This was the choice that they would then offer you. Uh, so I'm really grateful to be offered this. And honestly, it is the most convenient and the most easiest. You do feel when you start taking hormones as well, you will feel while you're adjusting to your new dose as well, everything becomes sensitive. Your nipples get bigger, they become uh, larger, they become more sensitive. You become more emotional, like you wanna cry at everything. I noticed my hair growth was majorly reduced. Um, what else did I see? Yeah, I just saw kind of softening of some features because of the fat distribution. Something that hormones won't do for trans females is Unless you are taking it pre-puberty, it will not alter your voice. So your voice, if you've gone through puberty, it will stay the same. If you are a trans man, your voice will deepen, but then it can never go higher again. So this is something that a lot of people think, oh, just take hormones, it changes your voice, it changes everything. It, it doesn't. Really, I'm just trying to remember the things at the top of my head and... It was really a long time ago I started taking hormones. So the effects, other than me saying it's amazing and it really worked for me and I would take hormones a hundred times over after trying all these different systems, I would say for me, I find the tablets were really effective and also the implant was really effective. The gels and the patches, mm, not my favorite choice. Didn't really work for me that much. I hope you guys found this video interesting. I hope you found it helpful. I'm trying to share from my perspective about hormones and how they affected me and how it helped me. Fortunately, I wish I had filmed my journey through my hormones so I could tell you exactly the changes then and as they happened. But either way, I hope this video still helps you and gives you more of a greater understanding about some types of hormone treatment. Any questions you've got, pop it in the comments below. I'll happily answer them and I just hope you enjoyed this video. So as always, thank you so much for watching. And until next time, take care of yourselves and I'll see you soon. Bye.